Let me know whenever I'm properly mic'd. Can you guys hear me good in the back? Yes? Yes. Yes. I get the thumbs up from Ryan. Up. Oh, thumbs down. Shit. Uh, my name is Kyle Ledbetter. Uh, I currently work at eBay as a usability engineer. Um, I'm going to present on Joomla 3.0 user experience. I think it was around a year ago at JM Beyond last year. Uh, this should be familiar. Uh, it was a little bit of a pipe dream. A year ago, it seems like a lot can change over a year. Um, it was a few months later at Joomla Day Chicago. Where's Mike Carson? There he is. He was the organizer for that, uh, but it was at Joomla Day Chicago that we actually got official uh, permission to really make this a, a real thing and start working on it. So in the last six months, seven months, we've been busting our butts, doing a lot of work, uh, and it's actually a reality. If uh, any of you, I'm sure a lot of you were faces I recognize from avatars from the forum discussion. It was probably one of the most exciting uh, forum threads and most overall positive forum threads I've ever seen with just unified community support and core team support for an effort. So this is what it's all about. And for if it's all brand new to you, uh, I'm excited to show this stuff to you because it's super cool and it's uh, pretty revolutionary or evolutionary for Joomla. So first of all, what is UX? Uh, most people know uh, UX is kind of a blend of a lot of things. I like to, to think of it as the force. It's, it's everywhere. It connects everything. It's the entire experience that you derive from using Joomla. It's all aspects of it. It's the interface, which is actually you know your heads-up display, which you're using. It's your cockpit. It's uh, usability, it's you know, the user interactions, what happens when you hover over things, what happens when you click things, how easy is it to figure out what you're looking at. Information architecture, it's uh, on the front end and back end of Joomla, it's how, where you place things, right? It's, we have this top menu that has site extensions, things like that. It's, it's logical placement where users can not have to ask questions, just intuitively figure out Joomla. Accessibility is a big thing. It's, uh, it's basically, you know, for, for vision impaired, hearing impaired, uh, everything. It's, it's different languages. It's how across the board everybody has the same user experience in Joomla. So these are the pieces that make it up. Uh, there's lots of people that work on this together. Uh, everybody represents a particular strength. And there's lots of coordination to make all this happen. The biggest part uh, of the JUX at least from my perspective, is the JUI, is what we're calling it, the Joomla User Interface Library. Um, historically, if you followed Joomla since the Mambo days or from Joomla 1.0 days, things like that, you've seen an evolution of the admin interface, and also you've seen an evolution of the front end, of the markup, the CSS, the HTML that we use. Um, we've had a little bit of a, a disconnect from what developers need and what we give them in the core, right? So. Uh, case in point, in the old days and now, you have components like that came along like Virtue Mart, Community Builder. Uh, now you have Jom Social, Red Shop, uh, Project Fork, all these components where they need a whole bunch of UI elements. It's not in a core, so to get around that, they create their own UI library. Then you get the problem that we have today, basically. You have uh, where you install a site and it looks like a ransom note where you kind of click through from page to page and it looks like different sites with different iframes. And this is, uh, it was a natural problem that happened because developers like to innovate, right? They face a wall and they get around that wall or they climb over it. So now this is an effort to actually bring that back all into the core of Joomla. So we're all using the same set of toys. We're basing it on Bootstrap and uh, at this point, it's, it's probably this huge buzzword on the web, at least for designers, right? I've never seen uh, designers across the world unite behind something. It's, there, there have been tons of libraries, tons of frameworks for CSS, but it, they were kind of neat. They did this thing, they did that thing, but they didn't do everything I needed. This is the best effort that I've ever seen personally. Uh, it's got every UI element basically that you could dream of, and if you can't dream of it, just combine two of their UI elements together and suddenly you have it. It's kind of a world where you don't have to write CSS for every little thing you need. You just get creative with the HTML elements that you combine. Um, as I say up here, it's, it's extremely modern, which is great. It's, uh, it uses CSS3, HTML5. It uses less for CSS. Um, 
every UI element, like I said, it's continuously tested and improved. That's a huge thing, right? Like the world has adopted Bootstrap and it's already on version 2.0.3, I believe, which means that it's moving rapidly. They're finding bugs. I mean, obviously the guys from Twitter developed this. Uh, so it's the best of breed, the best you guys out there. And we're kind of getting that as a free benefit, right? We just get to take that and build on top of that. So we have so much for free. I'm just going to go through a few screens just to show you, again, if, you, if you're not familiar, some of the stuff that's inside Bootstrap. You have all these buttons. You have buttons with drop downs, button groups, different size buttons. And you see uh, one of the biggest benefits is the documentation. This is a screenshot from their site. You, get, you could basically copy and paste this code right into your, your CMS or your site or your template or your component, and it will look like that, right? And that's one of the beautiful things. We're going to have all this free, great documentation for us to build on. All different kinds of navs, like tabs and pills and things like that. Labels, badges, and this is fun. Like uh, Badges are one of the new additions. I feel like every time I go back to their site, there's some little element they've added, right? And this is great because as a community, if we're all using this, every time you come back to Joomla when it's updated with the latest bootstrap, all of our component developers, all of our template developers can now use elements across the board the same. We can finally be on the same page with all these things. And these are elements that we need, right? Every component could use these two things. This is another great one. They have uh, thumbnails for images, for galleries, things like that. But it, they're extremely versatile, as you see even right here, just in a couple of examples. Uh, different combinations of markup, and we get all these different solutions. So you can imagine where you can use all this within components, right? This could be modules with avatars. This could be activity stream. This could be galleries, things like that. So. They kind of lay down great examples, and you can take it wherever you want. Here's some more cool things. They have these, these loaders. And with CSS3, all you got to do is tack on uh, active, right? And all of a sudden, you have stripes that are animated, things like that. And you can see their, the way they approach their markup I really like. They, they build on, on a base class, and then they add things to it, like progress, progress striped, et cetera. They do, at the top you see some alert messages, alert, alert error, alert success, alert info. And it's really cool because you learn it really quickly. And I know now uh, when I use a button, I can tack on button success and it'll be a green button. Same thing on my error message, success turns it green, info will be blue. But it's on all their elements. I showed you the badges a second ago and the labels. It, it's, uh, it's a very well done approach to markup and it's extremely intuitive. And that's, that's kind of an interesting thing, right? Like, user experience, you think of it as the people using the site. But this is also user experience for developers. This is what people feel like, how they enjoy developing on Joomla. And that's really what we want. We want to lower barriers for developers. Joomla is only as good as we know as the components that we install, right? You install Joomla, great, you can do a few things with it, but you immediately go to the JED and you install three or four. Sometimes I see some scary amounts of components on sites. You see the drop down and there's like 50. That's actually another good example of a usability fail that we need to fix too. So what I'm proposing, and some people this actually might be a little bit of news for you. I'm not just proposing that we use this on the admin of Joomla. I'm absolutely proposing that we use this everywhere across the board the same. Front end, back end, uh, installer, extensions front end, back end. So we don't have this separated island of markup and UI that we have to learn. We all know that if you install something like, I'm gonna use my own example, Project Fork as a project manager. On the back end, we have an admin interface, a GUI. On the front end, it doesn't look like a blog or something, it looks like a GUI on the front end. We have to have the same UI elements on the front end and the back end. In my mind, all that separates the front end and the back end is the template. By default, you have an admin template that looks more like a GUI. On the back end, on the front end, you have one that looks more like a site. A lot of people use Joomla as intranet. On the front end, it would be a GUI then, the same as the back end. The beauty of this approach is, honestly, you can do both, either or. You can have templates that look identical for the front end and back end if you want one experience, one way or the other, right? Some clients, you don't want to give a, a client a site where they have to learn a completely different back end. You can make the back end look like the front end, vice versa. So real quick, I'll go through uh, a few screens of this, but I just want to show you the, the, the different things that we're doing and all the stuff that's possible with Bootstrap just right off the bat. So this is, it's a, it's a rough approach, but it's 
the installer that's functioning that we have now, uh, it's bootstrapped. It's, it's all bootstrap markup. And just to show you a couple screens, and this is real simple stuff, right? And this can be improved. It's all the same steps as we have now, but it's a little more clean. It's using things that I showed you earlier, like the labels and the badges for, for the different, different stats and the different toggles. Uh, again, another screen. But the point I want to make when I'm showing you this stuff is just that this is a starting point. Uh, the beauty of Bootstrap is once you get onto using Bootstrap and you're using the markup, you can start playing, right? We can, we can not have to focus on adding all these UI elements, all these CSS chunks just for every little bit of the page. Once we're on it, we have it all, right? Then we can start playing with UX. Then we could just dream up any kind of flow you want, and you don't have this barrier, you don't have this time uh, sink of having to add all these elements in CSS and design it and things like that. No, you, you go straight to the code, you're playing with the markup, you're playing with the flows. Um, things like creating a menu item, an article, a module, assigning things to things. This whole flow, right, once we're on Bootstrap, we can play with an end-to-end -end creation for a page that makes sense. We can focus on UX. Here's a couple shots of the admin interface. This is actually where it is now, and this is this stuff, I'll give you the URL later. You can get this on GitHub and actually see where we are with this progress. But right now we already have it to where this is all bootstrapped. Uh, these are all common classes that you'll see throughout Bootstrap. So for things like the little gray rounded corner with the drop shadow, that's a well, right? So instead of something like a module class. But you'll see these, you'll see these things used everywhere. It, the nice thing about it is it's not isolated to just being a module. If I want that gray style, I can use it anywhere, right? Um, so that's talking about Bootstrap a little bit. On the UX side of it, I want to really take this to a dashboard situation where you see instead of tucking things away in, in the accordions and things like that, we're actually using all the screen. I want more and useful modules in the admin, right? So I want to log in and see stats or something like that. Uh, whatever I have installed, I want to see a particular module that talks to that component. So if I'm using RedShop, I want to see, immediately see stats on my latest sales, things like that, right? So that's another, another uh, paradigm that we need to change a little bit. Uh, for all these component developers, they need to be making modules so you can create your own dashboard, essentially. If every component you used had modules that talked to it, you can go and build a dashboard exactly how you want it. And with Joomla 2.5 moving forward, 3.0, you can make user groups, and user groups have permissions to see particular things. So if I have a blogger on my site, or if I have a sales manager, things like that, they all see different things when they log into the dashboard, because it's, that's all there, right? All, all that programming is already there for us, but we have to kind of tap into it. See if I have another couple shots to show you. This is uh, this was actually the reason I took this screenshot. It was the last component that I updated. So now I've updated every single view. Right, well we have me and a couple other guys. Uh, every single view of the admin. Uh, this is Smart Search, and uh, but you can see some. Uh, we're, we're now starting to not only move to Bootstrap, but we've also reconfigured some of the columns and things. We're starting to really starting to play around with user experience. Uh, a big thing about the, the Gmail admin is that it's overwhelming. When you look at any different area of it, it's just so much information. So what we need to do is we need to find out what's the most valuable information and tuck away everything else. Uh, and we need to make it configurable without having too many configurations, right? One of the issues of Joomla is you click on configuration for any component or any menu item and there's a thousand options, you know? So, we have to strike a balance. We have to make it as useful as it is now configurable, but we have to make it look simple. So that's a big hurdle, and that's going to be something that we experiment with. Here's uh, article editing. And just this tab alone, I'm, I'm extremely happy with this, right? Like, compared to Joomla right now, if you log in to edit an article, you scroll down about 500 pixels, and then you get to a little editor, you know, that's one inch by one inch. And you're editing an article to, to get to the damn editor, right? So I'm excited to first have this, right? Simple view. It almost looks like writing an email. Uh, but then you see at the top, we, instead of using the sliders, we're pushing things into tabs. But already, in my opinion, how many tabs is that? Seven tabs? You know, I, I think we need to basically get it to the point where we have the article details, simple options or basic options, whatever, and advanced options. And make it as, as least confusing as possible while still giving you the power. So, just like I was saying, 
the front end is actually just as important or maybe more important. A lot of people kind of thought that uh, this whole UX effort was going to be limited to the admin. But I think the front end is just as important, probably more important. Because sure, users use the, the admin to, to edit Joomla and that's their user experience. But the front end of Joomla has probably more problems and it's probably more disconnected than the back end. So just to show you a couple things uh, and explain what we're doing here. This is, this, this is sample markup, right? This is in a real component. This is one of the beauties of Bootstrap and using, uh, using a set of UI that you can play with that you don't have to write the CSS for. This is all the things I showed you earlier, like the thumbnail class and the button class, everything from Bootstrap. But you just combine it in such a way to do what you want it to do, right? So this is going to be maybe an example for Jam Social or Community Builder. Uh, and one of the things I want to do with 3.0 is in your install options, I want there to be a developer option. And in there, it's, it contains all the different sample markups for all the UIs that you could possibly dream up of for the front end. Galleries, forums, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we're kind of helping you guys out. We're not, we're not just saying, we're on Bootstrap now, good luck, got, got speed. Uh, this is another thing I really want, and this, is, uh, this probably falls in the, the nice to have list. I don't know if we'll get it in, in 3.0, the first release. But I also want to use Bootstrap and this whole new UI UX approach to streamline the editing from the front end. I think a lot of, a lot of users don't really need to get in the back end, you know? You roll out a site for a client or a, a typical user, even yourself, even a power user, right? When you're, on, when you're on the front end, you want to be able to quickly edit things and not have to jump to the back end for everything. So what I essentially want is an admin toolbar where you can kind of, you know, click edit page and it scrolls down and gives you all kinds of options that you would have in the back end, but push it to the front end. So once we get on to Bootstrap fully, this is another thing that we can do, right? We could really start playing around with stuff like this. One of the issues that everybody kept saying that all these Bootstrap sites, if we're using it, isn't it all going to look the same? Are we going to have that problem where every site you look at, instead of looking like Joomla, now it's gonna, everything is going to look like Bootstrap? I think it's yes in a good way. Um, I think that every, everything will be the same, and it'll make it much easier to style. A template uh, designer can basically just style things one time, and it'll go across the board. You, know? you style for the sample content, you install Jam Social, you install Quinina, whatever. You don't have to do a whole extra style sheet, right? Like we have now, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, also, you're loading all this stuff. These components are loading all these extra CSS files. They don't have to do that. Component developers can just use what's in the core. So I'll get to that a little bit more, all the benefits for developers, but Bootstrap is like anything else. When 960 Grid came out and everybody started using it, everybody's like, oh, all sites are gonna look the same. They're gonna be using grids. But that's a good thing. You want things to, be, to follow patterns, design patterns. You want users to go to a site and, and recognize what a search box is, what a button is, right? You can theme it all you want. It doesn't have to look the same. Yes, everyone wins. Component, component devs. I've already talked about this a little bit, but it, the big point I want to drive home here is you, don't, you can focus on the code. Uh, where's Nicholas? Is he in here from Akiba? Hey, hey, you know, uh, last year I picked on you, right? I'm going to pick on you again. Uh, Nicholas writes extremely great code. It's awesome stuff. Akiba backups, admin tools, uh, subscriptions. I don't know. He probably has like five that he rolled out today. He always has new components. But sometimes he struggles on the UI front. He's a one-man shop largely, right? Do you have multiple people? Nobody? Well, you know designers. We know that. but Right. <laughs> That's not a shock. But you're a small shop, right? And this is like 90% of Joomla developers around the world. Uh, two or three people shops with developers, but they don't have the luxury, in my opinion, of having a, a UX guy or a UI designer, right? So they do the best they can. They, they have this whole extra workload. He develops this great backup system. Great, it doesn't have any of the UI options in the back end of Joomla to actually facilitate this. So he has to cram in extra UI libraries, things like that and deliver, you know, bright green box that says successful or whatever you have now, right? Or bright orange, update available. Uh, he won't have to do any of that, right? It'll, it'll be essentially like an iOS SDK for developers, and which will be a huge draw for more developers kind of sitting on the fence. They'll be like, oh, well, I don't have to mess with that anymore. Not only does Joomla have a great framework, a great platform, great API, 
Now I can just tap into their UI. So win for those guys. And some people would say, that means we're going to have to update when we go to 3.0. What about backwards compatibility, that kind of thing? You'll have to update, but in a good way. It's a good thing. It's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be, I think it'll be fun for people, honestly. You know, once you play around with uh, Bootstrap for a little while, it's like, oh, I can do that. Oh, no, I don't really like that. Let's get creative with that. Let's, let's do this over here, right? Like, it's, it's playing around quickly. It's rapid, agile development. Uh, you can do it. The way I use it uh, at eBay is we create flat HTML, CSS, JavaScript views. It's not even Joomla or anything. And in the old days, I, old days, six months ago, uh, <laughs> I would work in fireworks and present a JPEG, right, to my team. And they'd say, man, that's beautiful, great, okay. What the hell happens when I click this button? And I'd say, oh, I didn't really think about that. Uh, so now, you click all the way, drill through a flow, we have interactions, right? Once we're happy with it, once we've tweaked it, I hand that off to a PHP engineer, and he hooks it all up, and he doesn't ask me anything. He knows exactly what to do. If you have any questions, go to the UX site, click around, see for yourself, right? It's a, it's a whole new way of developing. Uh, where you kind of draw all the bugs and problems of the usability in the UX in the beginning, on the front end, instead of building the whole thing, right, and getting to the end, and it's just like, man, this sucks. But I'm going to release it because I've already spent a lot of time on it, right? So I, I think it, we'll be able to focus on UX flows, not UI, which is the big part, right? Everybody will have these components that actually seem to just work better, but people won't know that they, they, they got rid of all the problems during the early phases of development. Template devs, again, I'll say this every time, everybody wins. Um, template devs is going to be awesome. Uh, right now, all these template clubs or these custom template devs, they charge or you have to do extra if you're going to support X components, right? You I know some places even charge per component, which is crazy. I mean, this is, this is a CMS and a framework. Everything shouldn't be one-off, so we shouldn't have to keep supporting each particular component. Uh, I think template shops will be able to just design for the, the sample content that you get with Joomla. And they'll know that it's going to support every component, right? You don't have to just do a special template for K2 or a special template for Kunina or whatever, right? You know it's going to work. So it's, it just kind of levels the playing field and makes it easy for everybody. You, you style for one set of styles, boom, and you're done. So one of the issues uh, that was brought up was, isn't, isn't Bootstrap kind of heavy? It, it's like a 100K, right? But think about every component that you install. First of all, they, they're loading a different version of jQuery probably or something on top of Joomla. Uh, if we're using jQuery in the core, which I'll talk about at the end of all this, um, we're using all the same version of jQuery, one file. You know, uh, all the CSS, one file. So think about all the different components that you use today that each have their own huge chunk of JavaScript and CSS. And then think about your template and you're overriding each one of those huge chunks of JavaScript, CSS, whatever, it gets really nasty really quickly. Imagine now just making a template and you have, it's, a, it's essentially a theme. You don't even have layout kind of stuff because again, that's in Bootstrap. You're just changing the presentation. Just, it's actually just a skin for the first time, right? So, and I say it, and, I, and once we actually see this, you know, a year from now, whenever this is, when all the, the components are updated, I, I can't wait for that moment. I can't wait to just make a simple little template that's just a theme, really, just a little small chunk. And I keep installing things, and it feels like I'm just installing something on my iPhone where it kind of looks the same and it's pretty and I don't have to do anything, right? So that's one of the things I'm really excited about. Uh, end user benefits. Once again, everybody wins. When people install different components, first they're in the admin, right? So their first experience with that component will be, oh, okay, this looks a lot like the core content, or this looks like the last component I installed. I know where the configurations are, I know how to set this up. Uh, the next step is we've improved the page creation process, right, through all this. So they'll say, oh, this flow is real easy. I just click create page, picked all these couple of options, and then it's on my site. On the front end, people come to your site and oh, I get this. I know I was just looking at a gallery, but now I'm looking at the social aspect of that gallery, or I'm looking at the forum, but everything feels the same. It's not like there's a, a menu inside of a menu with a drop down with its own little kind of iframe site in, inside, right? Where you're like, okay, let's relearn how to do social interaction, even though I just used a forum, and that was social, but now I have to edit my profile. So why the hell does it look completely different than the, the, the forum? Again, uh, I, 
I'm seeing the proof of this right now. We did this at eBay, and it's, it's beautiful. Everything across the board is exactly the same. And there's no, you know, if there's a usability fail somewhere, first of all, it's not my fault. But <laughs> second of all, we, we get to change it one time, right? We, we change it in one place, and boom, across the whole site, everything is fixed. Uh, speaking of that kind of thing, the, the upstream, downstream, for Joomla, it's going to be a different world for component developers. They, they help solve issues, right? They're going to report things to the, the JUX team. They might have a solution that they submit. We check it. We pull it in. Not only we fix it for them and the core, we fix it for everybody, right? So it's going to be this whole kind of really kumbaya community that we don't really have right now where everybody's really working together. This is uh, a big buzzword in my head these days, but you definitely have to mention it. It's a huge thing. Uh, responsive. RWD, responsive web design. Um, Bootstrap has responsive built in. And you might say, yeah, but you could do that from a template, or you could do that. I can add CSS to make things res responsive. But you can't really make everything responsive unless it's all the same. So if we're all standard, if all components are the same, because I've done this, right? We, we sell uh, mobile templates. And again, we only support certain things because certain components, I'm not going to try to make that responsive. You're out of your mind, right? But if everybody's using the same markup, you have one set of responsive CSS that covers everything else, you know? I'm getting the, the hurry up sign. Sorry, I, I can go on this for days. Uh, that's just a shot of currently right now on my install, what the front end, what the admin look like on the phone when you go in. Right. Real quick, I'll touch on this. Uh, we're going to extend Bootstrap. We're not just going to pop it in and good, that's perfect for everybody. But the cool thing about this is when somebody needs something, like I was saying, we can, we can extend Bootstrap and everybody gets to share it. Because chances are, if you need a UI element in your component, I will too. So we're going to continually improve it in the core. We're not just going to put it in there and leave it. So over time, we're going to always upgrade. And this bottom thing, core and community sharing and collaborating, right? something that hasn't happened a ton in Joomla that I'm super excited about. And that's kind of what I was just saying as well earlier about the sample data. We're going to pave the way. If you guys have questions, we're going to have answers. We're going to collaborate with you. And it'll be in the sample data, so you can always refer back to that and see You know, if you're looking for a particular UI situation, we can help out. Here's just a few quick shots, and I know I'm out of time, but I'm just going to go through them real quick. Uh, this is the sample content, again, on the front end. And that's why I was saying the front end is probably more, more of a case than the back end for needing this. Uh, we can use Bootstrap for a blog. This is the community. Uh, here's some gallery albums. Here's a shopping cart. That's probably a big one for some people. Ronnie, wherever you are, we, I know that they're already using Bootstrap coming up soon for Red Shop. Uh, events calendar. And again, minimal styles, right? Gray background colors, borders. You have to style a component anyway when you install it. You have to apply a custom style to it. This time you do it once and it gets applied to everything. Contact form. Adoption is the key, right? We need everybody to buy in. We can't just do this from the outside. We can't just do this from a plugin. We can't just do this from something on the JED. It has to be in the core for real buy in. All component developers have to know that it's going to be there for them. They have to trust us. Trust is a big thing. So we have to know that it's happening, and we have to know that everybody's on the same page. The good news is that this is already happening. There are component developers that are already on board with this before it was even approved. Uh, this is a pretty good shot right here. This is Jom Social. They're already working on Jom Social. I guess it's 3.0 also. As soon as they heard about it, they already liked Bootstrap. They're going to ditch their massive Zen framework crap that gets installed. Like, that's a whole extra install process with 15 steps. They're, just, they're already ready to do this because it has all the UI elements they need for their profiles and things. Uh, I just saw this actually a couple days ago, AEC. Uh, they just released version 1.0. And this is the admin, right? But it shows they're using Bootstrap in some creative ways then. And I certainly have some opinions on this. But we can, we can come to a solution that works for everybody. And I've already learned a few things from seeing how they're using Bootstrap, stuff I didn't really think of yet. Uh, this is our stuff. This is for the next version of Project Fork that we're going to be releasing. Uh, this is a simple task list with task. But you can see it's extremely versatile, right? It's all the same stuff, but we're using it in tons of different ways. There's a lot of the, the people that are already getting on board with it. One of the last things I'll talk about really quickly is jQuery. Uh, there's definitely opinions on this, but 
My feeling is that Bootstrap was designed for jQuery. The world uses jQuery. Most of your templates and components you're already installing probably already install jQuery. We have issues of different versions because it's not in the core. It's not the latest version. If we, we have it in the core, the latest version, and if all of our UI in Bootstrap already uses jQuery, that already does away with the huge need. Now there are hurdles to overcome, right? Where's Daniel? Big Moo Tools fan. Uh, there's things that, <laughs> he's wearing a shirt. Moo Tools, show everybody. <laughs> yeah, nice. So, so my feeling to Daniel is that uh, if you appreciate Moo Tools, you're probably a real developer and you're good enough to do it in jQuery. <laughs> and if you really want to load it, you can load it. <laughs> it's just a programming language, right? You're a programmer. Uh, jQuery is just a lower entry point and most of the world uses it. It's an adoption thing. And for what we usually need, it's, Joomla is a plug and play world. jQuery is plug and play. We're gonna go into a planning session here really soon. I just wanted to show a few wish list things and I'll go over this with everybody. And that's it. If you wanna give her a go, that's a URL. Thank you, thank you. And I'll be available around to talk to if you guys wanna talk. We'll have a lightning talk. Uh, the lightning talks are in a couple hours? No, they're immediately following our talk. Right after yours, all right. So in 30 minutes, after 30 minutes, okay. I won't even into your time anymore. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. <laughs>